Jury selection is now complete in Donald Trump's hush money trial and opening statements are expected on Monday. The jury selection process was made difficult by Trump's fame and many Americans' strong feelings about him. Dozens of prospective jurors were dismissed, saying they couldn't impartially assess his guilt or innocence. The former president is accused of covering up a $130,000 payment made to porn star Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election. Now, it's alleged the payment was made in exchange for Daniels' silence about a sexual encounter she says they had. Trump has pled not guilty. And for more, I'm joined by Joseph Marino. He's a former federal prosecutor. He's in Alexandria, Virginia. Always great to have you on the show. Good morning, Linda. Good to be with you. So, you know, we're just about 24 hours away from opening arguments. This is a pretty historic criminal trial. Given everything we've seen this week, how quickly jury selection wrapped up, but also some of the drama that happened inside and outside of that courtroom, what are you expecting to see tomorrow? Well, Linda, first off, it was interesting that jury selection only took a week because I think a lot of us were thinking it could be two weeks. Either way, that's a long time for a normal trial, but this is, of course, is nothing but like nothing like a normal trial here. So for opening statements tomorrow morning, basically each side, starting with the prosecution, gets to preview their case. And it's more important for the prosecution. They really have to keep it to just the facts, not getting into legal arguments. And the defense doesn't even have to counter with an opening statement. They could really just kind of start the case, um, but usually they do. And it's important to make that initial first impression on the jury, but at the same time, you don't wanna go too long and bore them. So my guess is they'll probably both be done by midday or early afternoon tomorrow. Can you just lay out what you think they're going to bring forward uh, when it comes to their arguments, uh, both the defense and the prosecution here? So the, the, there's some legal complexities to the case, but when you get down to the facts, the facts are not that complicated. The facts are that Donald Trump did make hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. The fact is that he did make the payment within weeks of the 2016 election. And the fact is that he did do it in a way that was not accurate in his own accounting records. And so the prosecution is gonna harp on those facts and say, look, these are not really in contention. I think the defense is going to do two big things. One, they're going to say, you know what? Those facts rely chiefly on the testimony of Michael Cohen, who's likely going to be the prosecution's star witness. He's a convicted perjurer. So they're going to say, you really can't rely on those facts. The second thing they're going to do is say, okay, even if you take that all those facts are correct, this is not a crime. And they're going to get into why the interplay between state law and federal law doesn't equate to something that Donald Trump should be held guilty for, particularly not as a felony. You know, these are, as you mentioned, things that we've heard uh, over the last number of months and years. It's really been well covered in the news. And, you know, we're talking about how quickly jury selection went when everyone expected it to be much more difficult to find an impartial jury in this case with such a high profile candidate, uh, uh, defendant rather, who's also a a potential candidate for president, but also uh, just, you know, trying to uh, try somebody uh, uh, who is so much in the public eye with a case that's so much in the public eye. How likely uh, do you think it is that, you know, we're able to actually uh, have a fair trial here? Well, Donald Trump likes to say this is the second worst jurisdiction for him, the first one being Washington, D.C., both heavily, heavily Democrat-leaning cities. It's been reported that something like 87 percent of Manhattanites voted for Joe Biden over Donald Trump in 2020. Um, as far as the jury, I give a lot of credit to all those people who tapped out to say, you know what, I just don't think I can be fair. That's actually pretty honorable for them to do that. And as far as those that have been selected, those 12 plus the alternates, it's going to be tough for them. I mean, they're, they're really going to have to stick with what they promised to do, which is to have an open mind and to hear the facts and hear the, the opening and closing statements of both the prosecution and the defense and really say, OK, putting aside my political leanings, putting aside for whether I like or don't like Donald Trump, which is a hard thing for a lot of people to do, really kind of say, what are the facts? 
what is the law and whether he's guilty or not. And, you know, you say that's that's a difficult thing. Um, from your perspective as a former federal prosecutor, how strong do you think the prosecutor's case against Trump is here? Here's what I'd say, Linda. I, I would say that the law is on Donald Trump's side, but the facts are not. And here's what I mean by that. I mean, there are some significant legal arguments for why this case is very weak, including that it's potentially time barred, including that it tries to incorporate both state law as well as federal campaign finance law, which is outside of Alvin Bragg's purview to prosecute. Um, there's an argument that hush money payments are not even campaign contributions. So there's a lot of arguments to be made there. The problem is that the defense already made these arguments and Judge Mershon was not impressed and he's allowing the trial to continue. And so you can't argue those kinds of legal arguments to a jury. At this point, the defense is stuck with what it's got. And the facts, like I said, are not great. So if Donald Trump is ultimately convicted, he can re-raise all those legal arguments again on appeal. That's not going to be much consolation for him if, in fact, he's a convicted felon a few weeks from now. It'll be really interesting to see if your uh, predictions there go uh, as, as you uh, have them uh, laid out. Uh, thank you for laying that out for us today. Lots to watch for uh, in uh, the, uh, the days ahead. That was Joseph Marino, a former federal prosecutor.